You're goddamn right Lucinda's doing the diatribe this week because Sam Alito may have a gavel, but I've got a hammer of my own and I'm about ready to take a marble palace down with it. Of course, I'm talking about the draft opinion that Politico published a few days ago where Sam Alito lays out the rationale for overturning Roe versus Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey decisions. These are the two Supreme Court cases that have protected the right to abortion throughout my lifetime and before. They represent 50 years worth of settled law. And while the draft itself isn't final, the vote apparently is. It'll take another month or two for them to make it official, but the constitutional right not to be forced into pregnancy is about to vanish. And if you think this doesn't affect you, well, first of all, you're just wrong. Nobody benefits from living in a society where people can be forced into parenthood. But also, it doesn't fucking matter. Fuck the canary. This is the coal miner in front of you dropping dead. The same justification they used to overturn this one can and will be used to overturn other vital Supreme Court presidents. So the clock is ticking on things like federally protected gay marriage, federally protected access to contraception, and every single law that puts a check on Christian privilege. This is the thing I've been warning about since literally the very first twim I ever did. People used to complain that I spent too much time talking about abortion rights since, let's face it, they were under no real threat. Sure, the Republicans like to rattle their sabers about it, but it wasn't a fight they actually wanted to win. Banning abortion would galvanize their opponents and take away their best wedge issue. Lucinda, you're being too paranoid. Lucinda, you're focused on the wrong dangers. Lucinda, you're overstating your case. But I was right, goddammit. The sky was falling all along. And instead of getting to enjoy a good I told you so, I've got to turn right around and start sweeping up all these shards of broken sky on the ground. I mean, you remember during Brett Kavanaugh's tear-filled tirade of confirmation hearing when he cried about how overblown the rhetoric against him was? You remember the example he used? He said, quote, Democratic opponents of my nomination say people will die if I am confirmed, end quote. And he offered this up as though it were hyperbolic. But his Democratic opponents were right. Make no mistake, people will die because of this. People's lives will be ruined. Innocent people will go to jail. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you look at how flimsy the justification and Alito's decision is, it becomes super clear that nothing is safe from these theocratic activists. So yeah, everything is fucked. The goddamn plane, as the Big Lebowski put it, has crashed into the mountain. And that brings us to the hardest part. Because I'm already seeing frustration boil over. I'm already seeing the calls on social media to burn it all down. And I get it. I get why people feel powerless and helpless and violent. But burning it all down isn't a thing. That's just a meaningless series of anger noises. I mean, it's easy to feel impotent at a time like this. And after the last six years, it's easier than ever to feel like voting doesn't matter and raising money for candidates doesn't matter and peaceful protests don't matter. And when you feel like all the official channels are choked off, what is there left for you to do? But the truth is that this all happened at once. This all happened on November 8th, 2016. And it all happened because we were too busy burning it all down to do the workaday shit like voting and promoting candidates and gathering signatures and peacefully protesting. It happened because a bunch of overprivileged and underinformed people decided that Hillary and Trump were both just as bad. They ignored women. They ignored the LGBTQ plus community. They ignored people of color. They ignored immigrants. They ignored people of minority faiths. They ignored atheist, and they instead opted for grandiose but ultimately hollow proclamations about burning it all down. They tried to position themselves as someone above mere politics, and in doing so, they showed that they were beneath them. And along the way, they condemned us to decades of judicial extremism. But that's where the glimmer of silver is around this dark cloud. People often make the mistake of thinking that the right is more motivated by this issue than the left, just because they see the right making more noise about it. But that's not true. We haven't been making as much noise of late because we've been winning. But according to Pew Research, 59% of Americans support the right to choose. Hell, according to the latest numbers from the General Social Survey, about a third of Republicans think abortion should be legal for any reason. And when you start talking about cases of rape or danger to the mother's life, that number gets real close to 90 and look, as bad as this decision is, the Supreme Court isn't saying that it would be unconstitutional to protect abortion rights. They're just saying that the Constitution doesn't do it. They're wrong. It does. But one way or the other, we could still theoretically fix this problem with a federal law. Of course, to do that, we need Democratic senators. And we don't even need that many. Now, every indication right now is that the midterms are going to be a disaster for Democrats. 
Given the state of the economy, Biden's low approval rating, and the fact that red states with 36 people in them get as many senators as California, every pundit expects the Democrats to lose seats in the Congress. But that was before this decision leaked. And hopefully that'll be what it takes to remind motherfuckers what happens when we get too lazy to vote for the person who isn't after our rights. Look, we got here because of sexism and apathy. That's what cost us Hillary's presidency and with it, the Supreme Court. The last thing we can afford to do is succumb to the same thing again. There are more abortion supporters than abortion opponents. There are more Democrats than Republicans. There are more women than men. It is too late to fix this moment. We lost that in 2016, but we can still fix the future. And what's more, we're the only ones that can.